Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to show you the two theorems of Pappas Goldino side by side. One where we rotate a line, one where we rotate an area about an axis. In this case, we're going to be able to find the surface area of what we end up with. Here, we're going to find out, uh, find out what the volume is. If we take a line segment, which is a semicircle, and we rotate it about the x-axis right here, we are going to get a sphere. We want to know the area of the sphere. Here, we're going to take this area, which is a semicircle, and rotate it about the x-axis, and we'll again get a sphere, but in this case, we're going to try to find the volume. The big difference is that in the theorem of Pappas Galdinos, to find the area, we need to multiply the length times the distance of the, that the center of mass of the line segment travels as it rotates about the axis. And of course, it rotates around the axis. It gives you the path is a, is a circle. The distance, therefore, is 2 pi times the radius of the circle. And the radius is going to be the y-coordinate of the center mass of the line segment, which in this case is 2 times the radius divided by pi. 2 pi times 2r divided by pi. In this case, to find the volume, we take the area, the surface area of that semicircle, and multiply it times the distance, the center mass of the area travels as you rotate the area around the x-axis. The only difference is that in this case, the distance from the, from the axis to the center mass is 2r divided by pi. In this case, the distance from the axis to center mass is 4r divided by 3 pi. So that is different between a line segment and an area, which makes sense. The distance traveled, again, it's a circle, 2 pi times the radius. In this case, the radius is 4r divided by 3 pi. Finishing the two equations up, let's see what we get. Of course, here we should get the surface area of a sphere. Here we should get the volume of a sphere, and let's see if we get the right results. The length of a semicircle is equal to 2 pi times the radius. We have to divide that by 2 because we have a semicircle times 2 pi times 2r divided by pi. The 2's cancel out here. This pi will cancel out with that pi. We end up with 4 times pi times r times r, which is r squared. And that is indeed the surface area of the sphere. Now going for the volume, let's see what we end up with. The area of a semicircle is, well, for a full circle, it's pi r squared. For a semicircle, it would be 1 half pi r squared. Multiply that times 2 pi. Multiply that times 4 r divided by 3 pi. The pi's here cancel out. The 2 and the 1 half cancel out. We are left with 4 thirds pi r squared times r makes it r cubed. And that is indeed the, the equation or the formula for the volume of a sphere. So you can see how nicely that, that pappas goldinus theorem works. Of course, we don't need to use it for spheres because we know already for memory what the surface area and what the volume is. But here you can see how good those theorems are and we can apply that to all kinds of other shapes that would be much more difficult to find the surface area and the volume thereof if we didn't use this particular technique. That's how we do that.